next up is uh, <clears throat> Chansey Fleet um, at the Andrew High School Braille and Talking Book Library. I'm sure I mispronounced that. That's okay. Oh, we miss it's Andrew High School, but we mispronounce it on purpose. Otherwise, people start looking for the high school. Right. So, and we're a branch of the New York Public Library. So, today I was uh, on a scholarship committee meeting, and I'm mentoring a young woman who's a fluent Braille reader and a fluent graphics user in STEM in a STEM field. She wants to go into neuroscience, and yet she doesn't have daily access to tactile graphics. And I started to think about why that is. And so what I wanna talk about is kind of the cultural factors at play in reducing avail availability of tactile graphics and what kinds of things we might need to do to fix it and why it needs to be fixed. So the experience of blindness provides a valuable frame for perceiving the world, right? Um, Blind people can and often do make real contributions in design, science, technology, engineering. To quote my friend Liz Jackson, uh, she says, disabled people are the original life hackers. And it's true, we're, we're uniquely resilient and creative in the way that we solve problems because we have to solve them constantly. Blindness itself is not a burden, but we are burdened by avoidable frictions and exclusion when we're not equipped with education tools mm -hmm. and ed education and tools for working non-visually. Um, I have come to believe over the last several years that avoidable image poverty is one of the most substantial barriers to success in STEM education and careers. And it starts so early. While sighted children encounter hundreds of images every day, blind children, get to access very few, sometimes none. Chron chronic exclusion from spatial communication has a chilling effect on developing spatial awareness and cognition. And that has consequences for everything from orientation and mobility to design thinking to success in math and science. We've had graphics capable embossers on the market for literally decades, but most graphics are created and chosen by sighted transcribers and educators. Even among blind people who have privileged access to technology and who are in privileged educational institutions or careers, very few people have direct access to the means of production so that they can wish to see a tactile graphic and independently make that happen. Um, and I think that lack of access, that disconnect between wanting to see the thing and seeing the thing has a chilling effect on people's demand for tactile graphics. So I'm moving to a new home and my husband and I have been working on architectural drawings to work out our ideas about renovating the space. And that's been easy to do because I have a graphics education and I have an embosser. When I do move, I'll understand the layout of my neighborhood thanks to an accessible T-map, I can make that happen. Rather than settling for vague descriptions of COVID statistics like you find in alt text, if you find any alt text at all for New York City, uh, pandemic statistics, I just print out an embossed graph every few days. I'm able to pursue my interest in physical computing because I have access to uh, exploring tactile circuit diagrams. Images are really essential for STEM professions, but also for the everyday STEM that's part of everyone's life. Any image, can be rendered non-visually through embossing, 3D printing, or other processes. In most cases, processes that have been around for decades. But most blind people are not supplied with adequate access to images. So little supplied that image poverty feels inevitable. It feels like it's just, I don't have this because I'm blind. So on a really large scale, we don't have demand. We need to support blind learners at all levels with enough daily ready, self-motivated access to graphics and their means of production that our community starts to assert a reflexive right to images in the same way that we advocate for and have largely won access to, to text. Invest, investing in spatial literacy education, lower cost graphics equipment, resource sharing, and policy work is really crucial to solving the critical problem, which is that our community, despite the availability of, of uh, equipment and training to make graphics happen, is consistently unnecessarily relegated to 
a discouraging subprime text-only experience of STEM.